Casey, what's your take on the situation? Well, a tough situation all around uh, for the great fans here in Columbus and for their team. Uh, you know, I hope we have a, a bit of time to kind of dive into this because there's a lot of things here. Number one, for Yarmo, who's really hardworking, uh, I'll definitely give him that. He's he's one of those people that is always in the rink. Uh, anybody I speak to in junior, anybody I speak to in college, USHL, minors, over in Europe, he's in rinks all the time. So he's not one of that's in one of those executive positions that just likes the benefits of the golf course membership. <laughs> he's actually out there beating the bushes looking for players. They've done a nice job in terms of drafting. They have a lot of good pieces there. Make yeah. no mistake great, about it. Great yeah. trades they made. Some, right? Here. So, but the challenge for Columbus in the bigger context for me is this. It's more of a smaller to mid-market, not dissimilar to, let's say, a Raleigh. Sure. Yeah. And having played in Carolina, the difference is a lot of players love living there. A lot of players really enjoyed playing there once they get to find out what it is. But they've had some sustainable success. Right. Which also helps that. Whereas in Columbus, I think it's a, a really good spot as well. And Great players, look, yeah, guys. Sneaky road city. For sure. But the challenge is they haven't had the sustainable success. Yeah. And hockey's huge in Ohio in general, starting at the youth hockey level. Youth hockey, high school, college, minor pro, and of course the Jackets. Hockey's big in Ohio, but they just haven't gotten the traction of success, and that's a big part of the decision today. Yeah, and you talked about it a bit today, just the long leash that he had and, and Yarmo again credit to him they you know they made the playoffs five times mm -hmm. you know not a ton of success in there but they had, he brought in some great players made some great trades but 11 years you need a little bit more to show for it and I feel like the Babcock bringing in Babcock at the end I think there needed to be more due diligence they they said they did they said they kind of got it all the teeth crossed all the eyes and unfortunately it didn't work out he was only there for 78 days and but what do you do moving on now i think uh john davidson came out he said they want a fresh perspective going to the trade deadline so the new guy coming in is going to maybe get his footprint on the trade deadline mm -hmm. kind of get a new identity for this team because i think that's what they're missing is an identity yes. columbus blue jackets identity columbus blue jacket talk because you talk about the city the city's great the fans are there that cannon's always there when they score. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The fans, when they, when you're winning, they're there, and they're coming. So it's like give them, give them something to root for. They got some pieces, you know. They got Fantilli now. They got Veronkov. They got some young guys. Marchenko. Ken Johnson, Marchenko. They got a lot of guys. If you look down in that talent pool. Jet Greaves, get him in the net. Yeah. Get him in the net. Please so, continue. so we'll see. You're so, a check. So we'll see. But you're a check's kind of, and he was unhappy. He was looking to. As he should have been. He was up. He was down. He hasn't been really getting a ton of ice time, but, you know, at least Pascal Vincent has kind of said you're going to earn your minutes. Mm -hmm. But we'll see what the new GM does and, and what direction he wants to go.